So this is now one month into the 25 year anniversary tour for Images and Words. Yes. How's the tour been so far? Really good. Good. A lot of fun. Um, when we first announced that we were going to be doing this, it was kind of like towards the end of the astonishing tour. And we knew that 2017 was the anniversary. It's like, oh, let's do an anniversary tour. We're just kind of going to do a short run. And then we announced it and all the promoters all around the world were like, you got to come here. You got to come here. got to come here. Even when we were in the U.S., so like, are you coming to the U.S. with this? And we're like, uh, I guess so. <laughs> so now this year is going to be all touring. We, we didn't plan on it. We were going to be done, but it's going to be a, a big year of touring for us. How do, you, how do you approach rehearsing for a tour like this when you go back to do a whole album that you did 25 years ago? Is, do you approach it like you would any other tour? Um, how do you approach the rehearsals? Um, yeah, just it's the same mindset. You know, all right, I have to play this amount of music because this is what we're playing. Um, case being with this, a lot of it is already in our program. You know, yeah, right? that, our that is true. And stuff. So it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't like review process was easy right yeah i was kind of surprised like when i listened back like <clears throat> oh, you know what did i play and then as i started to rehearse the songs it kind of just all came back we must have played the images songs like a billion times probably why yeah, yeah. Okay. nice um when you when you choose the songs that kind of wrap the whole package you know around images and the words how do you how did you select the other songs in the set list um, well, Change of Seasons, which is the encore, was easy because that, that song was supposed to be on Images and Words. Not everybody knows that, but um, when we went into the studio to record, um, it was supposed to be a double album. And uh, at some point during the, the session, the label came in and was like, no, nah, we're not going to put that song on the album. So it, it was really supposed to be a part of Images, so it made sense to put that as the encore. And in the first part... We wanted to give a little tip of the hat to the Astonishing because, um, you know, that's our latest album. And uh, Originally, we had four songs from the album, like a little sweet, but our time went way over. <laughs> so we had to shorten it. Um, and we tried to put in a few songs, a couple of songs that we haven't played in a while and a song that we never played. And keep it exciting. We also, we didn't have too much time to prepare for this because we were doing the Astonishing and then the holidays came. Yeah. So, as much as it would have been great to do, you know, this song or that song, it's like, well, what songs do we know already? <laughs> you know, <laughs> even Dark Eternal Night was the challenge, getting that one back up. But things like As I Am and stuff, you know, are kind of in our blood. So, we put those in. Songs like that. You, you've got a cool solo intro to As I Am, um, where you're paying tribute to one of your big bass heroes. What made you choose that particular song? Um, <clears throat> John actually brought up doing, you know, an influential kind of uh, tip of the hat to, right. to Jocko because of the As I Am intro yep. in harmonic space. Then, um, so I went back and I listened, and uh, it seemed to really connect really well. And, um, I don't know, I think it was just something. I love that piece. Mm -hmm. I have to give John a lot of credit because before we broke for the holidays, I kind of wrote an email and it's like, you know, let's let's try to add a whole bunch of different things into the set to make it unique. Mm -hmm. and, and I made a list of, we'll do this, we'll change Metropolis, we'll pull a drum, drum solo. When we all went away for vacation, we got together to rehearse. We only rehearsed for two days. And John was like, hey, what about that... Uh, intro thing hey what about the Metallica and I was kind of like oh crap you remembered everything <laughs> <laughs> right, right remember that yeah. so we're like scrambling to make the, all those changes the email that was actually intercepted yeah not lost <laughs> right exactly but John was like on it he had learned all the things and all the changes even there was in Metropolis there's a section where we're, it's normally a guitar and keyboard unison yep. and we decided to make it a band unison and I mean, that must be hard on bass because it's pretty wailing. 
You know, I mean, not for yeah. you, but <laughs> it's actually not too hard. Yeah, but he learned it. I was like, yeah. "You learned that? <laughs> Holy crap!" I guess we're doing it. Yeah. So that was cool. Well, what would you say have been the 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 biggest difference looking back twenty five years ago and now? What's the biggest difference for you guys as a band, as a you know a full time band? Jordan and Mike. It's <laughs> <laughs> the biggest difference. The biggest difference, yeah. <laughs> Two different band members in 25 <laughs> years ago. Um, I mean, as far as, um, you know, the way that the band is run. Yeah. Uh, everything from how you guys work within the band. And uh, it's way more professional. I mean, when we started, we literally, like, we had never toured before at Images. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were, like, driving ourselves in a van, and we had no... You know, really yeah. no experience. So we're way more professional now. I like to think in all our experience, how to put on a show <clears> and <throat> a tour and how to travel and yeah. all our gear and our production and our lights. Yeah, I mean, experience is the biggest difference. <clears throat> you know? But um, it's awesome going back, though, revisiting that period in time because it was so powerful. So yeah. much was happening, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the music. Um, has timeless quality where you know I still enjoy we all still enjoy playing yeah that's true um, and I think that's cool when you can achieve that mm. when you can be a part of something that you don't get tired of yep you know yep that's uh, it's nice when that happens do you feel that you can when you write songs now and you you, you, you create the albums do you feel that you can kind of predict which ones so like which songs are going to be the ones that really catch on like was pull me under was kind of a bit, bit of a surprise it was it wasn't that wasn't the one you thought would really right hit it off right but it became a huge success overnight and yeah. um do you feel that you can kind of more predict that sort of success now mm. or is it still kind know. of the same as it was it's 25 still kind years of the ago? same to be honest with you sometimes you know, we'll all be like psyched about it. So, oh man, that song is going to be huge. It's not the next. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a dangerous thing to kind of chase mm -hmm. after, you know, because with images and words, we weren't writing to write singles and we didn't have that kind of success. And the, the music has a really pure kind of outcome because of that. So you can't get caught up in a, we're going to write this hopefully make it be something that's played on the radio. That's that's a bad place to be in. Mm. So you have to write what comes naturally and what feels good and sounds good to us, you know, and then hope for the best. How do you how do you approach that when you when you create a new album? Is there like a certain framework that you kinda of want to work within in terms of style or direction or like obviously an album like Octavarium had a huge concept to it. Mm -hmm. Um and also like scenes from memory and obviously that's yeah. astonishing. Um, do you kind of sit down and talk these things through before you start jamming along or is yeah. it just, yeah? We do, yeah. I mean, they're all, I can take you through every album almost, but they all have a, a pretty much a preset direction. You know, like if not very specific, at least generally. Like train of thought, we like we wanted to make it really heavy. We wanted to make every song be a song that the crowd would be excited when we started the song. Like you know, remember that mentality, and we wrote it in a rehearsal place. You know, scenes was a concept album, so we had to follow a story and have themes. Hmm. Um, so it really depends on on the album. Right. What's the biggest challenge on being on tour? So you guys says like individuals <clears throat> just staying healthy not not getting ill it's mm -hmm. the biggest challenge because it's so easy mm -hmm. you know yeah it's so easy to just catch a bug and and then it just ruins the tour the yeah, exactly. tour experience so I, I mean for me that's the biggest challenge as well as just getting enough rest right and just all the kind of basic kind of things definitely you know, being away from home, is that's always been the biggest challenge. And all of us have been married for many, many years and are raising kids. And kids are getting a lot older now and mm -hmm. full-grown adults. But um, it's uh, that's always the biggest challenge is being a husband and father away yeah. from your family for 
extended period of times, you know, four weeks, five weeks, whatever. Do you sure. um, do you make the schedule so that it, it'll work better with being also like a family we try. father? Than yeah, we try. I mean, it doesn't always work out, but we do try, and, you know, try to be home for holidays and uh, people have certain requests and special occasions and things happening, right. you know, big landmark events and stuff with their families. Yeah, we do try to work around that for sure. Is it is that part different now um, in 2017 than it was 25 years ago? Yeah. I remember we just toured whenever, right? We just... <clears throat> well, yeah, the images boards, images in this world was an exception. Yeah. I remember celebrating holidays in various yeah. locations. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I remember, being, I don't know if you remember this, like Thanksgiving in the back of a yeah. semi, yeah. you know, things like that. But yeah. we, we don't do that anymore, really. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But I, think be only, I think since then we've always made a point of kind of being back during the holidays and, and big family type of events. Yeah, I'm trying to kind of give ourselves time in between the tour legs. Right. So it's not just like, you know, consecutive months of touring. Right. Um, and in the position that Dream Theater is now in 2017, where you obviously have a huge catalog of, of hits and songs, and in, with doing images and words back to back as well, um, I wonder what this, like, for me, this, I can see the future of Dream Theater doing, like, two different roads. Mm -hmm. One would be continuing to kind of do major hits. Right. And the other one would be continue the, the road that you've been on, uh, the right record tour, right record tour kind of schedule. Right. Um, what sort of future do you see for Dream Theater the next, the coming years? Um. <clears throat> In just, those terms, sense just, just to continue being part of music, you know, music evolves. Um, you know, I see being able to write and do what we do is being able to be part of something that's bigger, bigger than oneself. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and to kind of push that along. Um, you know, that's the uh, that's the gift of you know being. In this band and being able to do what you love to do and uh, you know just continue yeah you know and um, but continue with experience you know I, I think being able to uh, have the experience now um, it's it's nice to have that and, uh, it, and it's almost like a fuel you know it's sort of reaffirms kind of um, what we've done, what we're capable of, and, and, and where the challenges are going forward. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to, um, like you said, that it seems to me that the, the driving force behind Dream Theater, um, having followed the band for many, many years, is like you say, it is the, you know, being able to create new things and moving forward, create new mm -hmm. music, but with experience. Um, is it is it difficult not to sort of get into a track that you already visited before? Is it difficult to find new elements? Is that something that comes natural, or is it something that you have to kind of say, "Oh, wait a minute, we did that"? Yeah, I mean, sometimes that happens, but I think generally, every, like everybody in this band really loves playing music. Mm -hmm. Everybody like very um, sincerely loves playing their instruments and getting together and being creative people like i don't think we'll ever lose that so when because of that when we're together and we write just things happen and we have ideas for days and days and days um yeah every once in a while i'll be like oh we did that before right so you have to watch that you know um and the other side of it is that we all love to perform because it's kind of that's the other part of it Mm. is you know we're musicians who enjoy the challenge of trying to recreate what we did live in front of people we understand the power of like live music and how that's a great experience for people to come and, and watch people play yeah we like watching that ourselves so there's those two parts and i think that it sounds really simple but you know what drives us is that we love doing what we do mm. And we enjoy each other's company, and you know, it's it's a lot of fun. When when you write the when you write your music, do you 
and you record, do you think about how will we do this live? Or do you just write it? Yeah, and just, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Or do you ever like think, oh, we're never going to be able to pull this one off? Yes. <laughs> Many times. <laughs> yeah, but that's, you know, and I've heard other musicians talk about this. That's, that's how you get better. You know, you come up with some crazy thing. Mm -hmm. You say to yourself, how the hell am I going to do this? And then you do it. You figure out a way to do it. And that's right. how you kind of get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's this between me, John, Jordan, James, and Mike, it's like there's a, there's a lot we can accomplish, you know, with technology and, you know, is it easy to be tempted, though, to kind of let the technology do the job for you? <laughs> well. <laughs> no, because then, because we love to play. So I mean, obviously, feel like, you know. Yeah. You know, we could either hire extra musicians. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we uh, it, it's something that, you know, we try to use uh, appropriately in where it makes sense. Like, yeah. for example, with the Astonishing the whole album was orchestrated. Yeah. So it's full orchestra, full choir, sing, you know, how are we going to recreate that really live mm. without traveling with an 80 piece orchestra <laughs> and breaking the bank and losing our houses? And, <laughs> you know, it, it would never happen. So having that recorded music on playback and playing to that in the mm. movie to us was a good example of using technology in a way where you know, the music is still alive, it's still the band, mm. but you have this enhanced experience yeah. um, because of, of uh, the tracks and technology bringing that forward. So that, that's the way we try to use it. Yeah. Do you guys pay attention to the fans on the internet and the memes and all that mm. stuff? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Not all. It, it's kind of a weird thing because you, I think as any public artist, you have to be really careful with that. You know, because when you, if you read into that stuff too much or if you're too, you know, regularly reading comments and things, it really mess with your head. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, personally, I try to stay away from it, but things pop through, of course. Mm. And, um, and there's a lot of funny things and cool things. And, um, you know, fans really, t it's amazing how much time and effort they put into certain things they do and sometimes those things come through and you're like wow that's really cool hmm. yeah. yeah certain things are good when you filters through you know but, right. but I, it's almost with me I don't need it I don't find it useful hmm. um, if I did I would spend more time in just in that but my schedule is you know being healthy keeping the music and right under my fingertips, mm. being prepared, warmed up. Like all of these things are really important to me to kind of delve into all these opinions and uh, yeah, and things like that. It's almost like, um, if I did find it useful, it would, I, I think I would probably be more open to it, mm -hmm. but um, Dream Theory fans can really be some of the <clears throat> most uh, mouthy. Oh, people. sure. Yeah. You know, but I've said this before, you know, it means that people are listening very, very closely and carefully. Mm -hmm. And to us, you know, we put so much work and detail into what we do that it's kind of cool that people are picking up on that stuff. Um, it's funny. We played a show with a couple of weeks ago and something happened with my guitar and it didn't play a part and mm -hmm. went back through and it was like this little kind of clean guitar line and this guy was like hey you didn't play that part and I was like <laughs> I didn't think anybody would notice that <laughs> so that's cool but I mean to me like all the forums the social media and stuff like that as a guitar player you know career minded person it's I think the cool thing about it is that you're able to reach people very quickly and you're able to spread news and information. You know, for me, I have other things going on. There's guitar camps and meet and greets and clinics and new instruments that come out, new signature instruments, things like that. And it's a great way to tell everybody what I'm doing and reach hundreds of thousands, millions of people really, really quickly that are in the same community. And for that, it's absolutely amazing. It's an unbelievable tool. Um, but if you're a thin-skinned 
kind of person who can't take criticism, reading a lot of comments and things is probably not a good idea. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you often think about that? You know, the fact that you are huge role models to thousands of musicians all over the world, and like really think about a lot of the things that you do and say in yeah. public and so on. Sure. Yeah, I mean it's. I think it's just something that naturally happens, right? When you have a career, mm -hmm. and, and things evolve, and, and that's part of um, what happens. You know, people find out about things by 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 listening, mm. and um, so it's it's more or less how we grew up. You know, we grew up listening to music and being drawn to certain bands, and and it's just a natural thing to let those influences um, become a part of your life. So it's it's sort of just this natural progression, right? You know, yeah. Okay. We understand how people like when you look up to certain people it could have an influence on you for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, us growing up, there's certain musicians who we followed and. You know, it's something that you really respect because of how they live their lives or their practice eth ethic or whatever it is. And so we realize we're, we can have that same influence, you know, for good or for bad. So I think everybody's pretty conscious of, of, of that. And, you know, we're not, we don't want to get out there and just be bad, <laughs> <laughs> negative influences on people. I mean, and plus, that's not who we are anyway. You know, it's kind of like the thing with this band is, if you've ever talked to us and you guys have known us for a long time, mm. this is how we are. Like, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's not any different at home here. You know, so, so you're now going to have the camp as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, like for, uh, something you've been thinking about. Yeah. Like teaching people. Right. So, yeah. I mean, John and I went to Berkeley. Um, we come from a, a background of, of learning about music and, you know, being, musicians who are students of music and still loving that learning. Um, I've done master classes, guitar clinics, whatever. I've never done a guitar camp. So this is the first one I'm going to be doing in August. Um, and I'm looking forward to it because, I mean, it's not only that for four days, all these guys come in, guys, girls play guitar and we have a great time, but the instructors that are coming who are, who are guests are like the most amazing guitar players on the planet. You got Tony McAlpine, Andy McKee, Andy James, Tosin Abasi, Jason Richardson, Devin Townsend. I mean, every name I mention, it's like all these guys are going to be in the same place teaching, jamming. Um, it's going to be really cool. And you'll have concerts in the evening. Yeah, we'll have concerts in the evening. We're going to have a barbecue and we're going to hang out. It's on Long Island, actually in the town where we record a lot in Glen Cove. Mm. So it's a, an area of Long Island that we're very familiar with. It's beautiful. Summertime. It should be fun. And you did an instructional video a very long time ago. Have you thought about doing another one? Um, no. no. Um, I haven't really thought about it, actually. Um, I think for me, it's just more about... Um, just staying creative and, uh, and just learning more about um, what I do, you know, because there's always things like software has become a new instrument, you know, and, and recording and there's so many, there's so many things that, um, that you try to do. Um, <clears throat> so I try to get more of that kind of stuff in um, when, when possible, but, um, you know, being in the band and doing what we do is a is a full time job. Uh, and it's hard to kind of uh, take on much more than what we have. You know, it's pretty much consumes every mm. every minute. So, what what sort of music would you listen to that would kind of trigger the creative part of you? Is there any <clears throat> anything that moves me? Yeah, you know, I try to listen to uh, things outside of. Longer listen to and discover new things, and, uh, and try to uh, you know, try to get that to be um, 
part of um, I try to be I try to let those things become like ingredients of of, um, of what's going to happen in the future mm -hmm. you know like start internalizing things and really moving with things that are powerful and and then find a home for those kind of things with the band mm -hmm. you know and that's that's what makes us unique. I think that's what makes a band a band. Hmm. That's what I love about bands when when people can achieve that, you know, you find common ground and you build upon it. You know? Um what sort of music would or what in new music that you listen to would uh, impress you or kind of make you go, Oh wow, this is really this is really cool. Is there anything like in particular? Is it Technique, skill, or is it the, the songwriting? What would be the? It's all those things, you know. It depends. Yeah. I mean, there's still a big part of us that's floored by some crazy technique by a musician. Like, holy crap, how's that guy doing? You know, that's sure. And if in the context of of what they're doing musically, it has some substance, then that's even better and that's the thing that catches your hmm. your attention but sometimes you know like john said it could be anything i mean style of music just hits you hmm. you don't know where you are where you're going to hear it and if it moves you and makes you feel something then there hmm. you go that's, that's what it is so yeah it could be the songwriting could be the production the sound of it sometimes you hear something oh, that sounds unbelievable i wonder who produced that i wonder who hmm. mixed that you know hmm. um and like i said yeah technical stuff Still, of course, we're all students of the instrument. You hear some crazy player that's out of their mind. You know, it's it still kind of gets you going. Is that something that you always try and tap into for each album? The, the kind of the craziness, the mm -hmm. you know, the really fast unisons and on. Yeah, is that something that you you feel like you kind of have to have on a dream theater? Album? I think it's it's uh, or is it's, it just come naturally? It's natural. It's just part of what we do. Right. You know, it's it's part of wanting to do that. You mm -hmm. know. Um, And I, I don't see that ever going away because mm. every time we get together, somehow that'll yeah. come out in some form. It's just a part of what we do. Well, that's, that's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Well, I mean, that's it's fun. that's part of what makes Dream Theater really unique as well. Yeah. For me, is like when you see you guys live. Right. You can in one minute, you know, you you're playing something that makes your jaw drop, mm. and the next minute you just close your eyes and you drift away with the music. That's great. Um, Thank you. Which is really really unique for Dream Theater. Thank you. I appreciate it. We, I mean, that's something, those two elements, you know, there's, there's kind of like that, that really exciting kind of shock, like hyper musicianship thing. That's always fun to be a part of and fun to listen to. I love listening to stuff like that, but there's also the bigger thing, which is the, the landscape and the songwriting and the melodic part, right? which is such a big part. You know, when we listen to music, we get the chills when we're listening to it. Hmm. And it doesn't matter if it's simple or complicated. Um, those moments are special. So we try to capture all that stuff. Right. You know, and I think it makes for more interesting songwriting, more interesting albums, more interesting concert experiences. It's not just one thing. You know, if you were being bludgeoned over the head with just constant right. notes, it'd probably get boring. Mm -hmm. And maybe the other way, if it was just like all atmospheric, like <laughs> getting lost, you might fall asleep. Yeah. So we like the combination. Have you guys noticed a change in the kind of demographics of the fans in, lately, or is it kind of still the same, like a huge range from young to older, and or is it has there been any like noticeable change in that over the last few years? More, more Nor uh, Norwegian fans <laughs> <laughs> than ever before. <laughs> It's pretty amazing. Well, <clears throat> the people that grew up with us have. As a result, their children have grown up with us, yeah, true. so now, um, so that's something that's happened. Yeah, yeah. Our, a whole younger generation of fans mm -hmm. um, have been created as a result. Yeah, and they're coming to shows. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see people, um, you know, from elementary school to <laughs> you know adults. That's pretty um, wild. And more, yeah, I think. To see. It's a mix, more of a mix of men and women, whereas when we started, it's probably mostly guys. Mm. I think now it's it's more of a it's more of a balance between men and women, like John said, younger kids, or people that are, you know, 
older who really enjoy music. You never know what a dream theater fan is going to look like. You can't judge somebody by what they look like. Hmm. You know? It must be amazing as an artist to have that sort of reach. It's cool. You know, and because a lot of the uh, really popular artists mm -hmm. these days, you know, they're it's very narrow. Yeah. Their their audience. Yeah. It's like. 19 to 23 right right you know for certain types but sure. but for dream theater you have you guys have such a huge reach yeah right? from like you say from young to old and yeah. from guys to girls everything yeah. it's very cool yeah yeah sure is there a huge difference in the in the crowd interaction from country to country or continent to continent yeah, yeah it depends i mean you know <clears throat> yeah i mean italy is very very uh tons of energy and emotion, singing, things like that. Mm. Certain places tend to be a little bit more conservative, more observant. Mm. So um, uh, the energy dynamic is probably the, the, the biggest noticeable difference, mm. you know, as to whether um, they're just sitting and observing mm. or um, if they're celebrating, you know, with, with singing and yeah. And, and really, really kind of putting out a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, those are kind of noticeable differences. Mm. Yeah. How do you deal with that and the difference uh, in dynamics? Just, <laughs> just try to stay focused <laughs> and, and, and not to let it distract you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine it's quite hard you to mm. one night play for a very energetic crowd and yeah. then the next is just yeah. blank stares. Right. <laughs> you know, you, you just, you kind of, You take it as it comes, you know, like John said, I mean, we just, we're playing and we enjoy what we're doing and we're trying to put forth the best music that we can, regardless of, you know, the audience. Um, having said that, there's certainly, if you're getting more energy back from the audience, it definitely, you can feel it hmm. for sure. I mean, that kind of amps you up. Um, but, uh, you know, we realize if, even if people are more observant, They're, they bought a ticket because they want to see us play. Mm -hmm. So we know they're there because they want to be there. Everyone, so we don't have to worry about it too much. Yeah, everyone has a different way of, <laughs> right. of, of expressing um, different expressions, right? Yeah. It, right. Does, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean less or more of anything. Right, it's, right. It's, uh, it's almost like, like we get it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we don't get offended. No. Yeah, we like, get well, you know this particular area. This is how they show respect. Exactly. Yeah. You know they they're not gonna try to interfere with what James is mm. doing. And if we're getting tomatoes thrown at us, yeah. be another story. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. People are pretty happy to be there. You you mentioned James. So James is doing a little bit more talking this time. Yeah. Between songs, mm -hmm. which um, I've missed over the yeah over the years, which yeah. I and I think it's great. Mm -hmm. As Was that something that you consciously talked about? Yeah, and, and I, I had a conversation with James um, because uh, there is a nostalgia to, to doing a tour like this. Mm -hmm. Because with Images and Words, even though it was our second album, it's for a lot of people the first album they got into is their introduction to Dream Theater. Mm. Um, and so there's fans who have been with us for as long as the album came out. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a little bit of a storyteller's Yeah. vibe that's very cool and I, and I love what James is doing mm. and every night I tell him man I, you know I love what you're doing because it's a very personalized uh, moment during the show where he's sharing stories that a lot of people don't know only we yeah. know and um, it, it, it kind of like marks the importance of, of the album and mm. that period of our life so uh, I, I absolutely love that he's doing that I find it very entertaining myself. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. And, you know, it brings you guys as a band a little bit closer to the audience as well. You, sure. You yeah, it's like, way more personal. Yeah. I remember the, the, the Storyteller um, series that they used to do on, on MTV. Yeah. I found exactly. it really interesting. Yeah. Because, like you say, you, you, you get these stories that, mm -hmm. that you, you never heard of, you know, these funny things that happen yeah. really during recording or on tour. Little insight, and, you know, and, and it's kind of like you're just, you're in the same way that you might in a private kind of dinner party or something mm. like tell a story about oh man when we did this he's doing that in front of mm. you know a lot of people so it, it definitely makes it more intimate mm. and brings people closer to the band I think. 
Mm. He's quite a funny guy too. He's so. very funny. He's yes. hysterical. <laughs> yeah. He James is really funny, for sure. So what's the plan for the for the rest of the year for Dream Theater? Keep going. <laughs> Keep touring. Keep touring. Yeah, it's a big touring year. Yeah. 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 Keep touring and uh, enjoy it. We we thought we were we we're going to be done, like I said before. Yeah. But yeah, we have a second European leg in April and May. Mm. Um, we're going to take some the summer off and I have my camp in August hmm. we'll reconvene September uh, we're going to be playing in Asia right. and then we're going to bring this uh, same tour to North America where like I said as soon as we announced it yeah, all our US fans were like you got to come here so hmm. we will do that in the fall and that'll bring us to just before the holidays hmm. and probably the following year we'll get in and start working on a new album but not before that hmm. yeah. cool, cool. I think we're done. Think awesome, guys. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, so thank, you. <laughs> thank you guys for like everything that you you're doing. Hey, you know? it's you know it's. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great a lo- it's a great hobby to have. It's a long <laughs> history. You yeah. guys like you were telling me started here. Yeah. So it's really special that we're here. It is. It really, yeah. really is. Like yeah. you know, we would never imagined that you know you guys would would come to this town because you know, it's, it's always also the bigger town yeah you know that yeah they get the big crowds and right. all that but then uh, you know as soon as it was announced and tickets went on sale boom everything that's was amazing. sold in a blink of an eye you know that's great and we and we you know also we really appreciate it we we really do mm. yeah, especially what you're doing kim because mm. you know it's not you're not a hired guy by us it's like you're doing this because it's something that you enjoy doing and and that is such a huge service to us. It really is because you you're bringing the whole international fan community together. So bravo on doing that. Thank you. We really really yes. appreciate it. It's really yes. nice because we don't have anybody really that does that for us. So it's, I want you it, to know how much we appreciate it. Thank you. And it seems like the the format that Kim is doing this is in is, is really working. Yeah. Because you see how many sort of dream theater fan communities to kind of. Is there, oh, is there, oh, yeah. and say, hey, we're here. We've right. been here a while, but right, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, it is. It really, really is. It's very, very cool. Um, so yeah, so you know, it probably doesn't get expressed enough, but we really do appreciate it mm. because we we don't personally do that. You know, <laughs> we're, we're focused on writing and playing and everything mm. else, and and there's really nobody mm. in our organization necessarily that does that. So mm. you're an extension of that. It's really, really cool. It's yes. been awesome very invaluable yeah it know? really I mean, is I mean that's I mean I think that's something that experience has kind of taught me mm-hmm. is that uh, it's great when when your organization grows and and, and, and there's just a bigger uh, team mm-hmm. or a bigger group um, I think that's really <clears throat> one of the things that um uh, helps us mm. it definitely you know, does you know because um, it's almost like um, well what's the saying like many minds is better than one yeah you know, like the more the more thought the more ideas the more stuff that's uh, the more yeah. energy that we have mm. um, I think it's great to be able to kind of um, have that sort of sort of room or, or, or place to kind of reflect and to kind of understand what's happening. Mm. Um, that's great. Yeah, a sounding board. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. That's that's what I was trying to think And of. it's still yeah. really important and valuable to us because we're not <clears throat> like, we're still grassroots in a lot of ways, yes. you know? So have, we're not all over the radio. We're not a pop band. We're not, mm. you know mainstream in any way so the the community that's out there is very powerful and very big but mm. bringing them together and communicating in that way it's it's amazing i it's always cool. find it so cool to see when well when you guys put out a new album yeah. how long it takes before mm-hmm. you have the first um cover version i know of, right <laughs> it's, it's, and the last it's time it was like 24 hours it's unbelievable and it was up yeah i know <laughs> and it's, it's, it's Great, and it's great with too. Like right. The dozen artists that have done this all over the world—it's it's amazing. Yeah, it's you a know. lot of talent out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cool guys. All right, all right. Awesome. Thank you so much. You got it. All right.
Thank Very you. cool. All right, boys. Time to get some dinner. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, John. John. That was fun. Uh, Thanks, all right. Thanks. Thank you, John. Thank you.